Hi, and welcome to our presentation on the flying lawnmower. Now, has this ever happened to you? You're trying to cut the grass, and unfortunately you reach a creek. Now you could whip out your old, slow, and non-flying lawnmower and try to mow that grass on the other side. However, you would have to mow right through the creek, and there's no possible other way that you could possibly get to the other side. So, we proposed a new idea. That's right folks, it's the flying lawnmower. Now, with this design, you would be able to fly over that creek and mow the other side. And just like that, you can get back to your grass cutting. Now, in the early 2000s, there was a viral video of a prototype of the sky cutter. This sky cutter was sold by a company named Flying Things. They sold these flying lawnmower kits to the public, and they were designed to function very similar to how a model plane works. The parts were made of plastic and wood, and they were ready to assemble. These parts were cut from a CNC. Now today there are no functioning links to purchase the sky cutter, so if you wanted a flying lawnmower, you would have to build it yourself. This is why you might find a lot of forum posts asking for plans on how to build it. The flying lawnmower is just a simple lawnmower with a twist. It has propellers, and it has wings. The appearance looks really cool because it's a flying lawnmower, and it also gets the job done. It's a great size, and if you find things aren't fitting, you can fold up the wings. It's futuristic, it's a great gift for Christmas, and it makes a great video. Our lawnmower is an electric lawnmower. There's no gas needed. That means that there's also no pull cord to pull over and over again to make sure that it starts. It's just going to start by the simple press of a button. That also means that it's going to reduce the amount of equipment needed. There's no need for a gas canister or anything like that. That also means that there's going to be less noise and air pollution, and it's also going to be space efficient because of the folding wings. As for safety, there are controls on the handlebar of the lawnmower which ensure a safe flight. You'd be able to control the angle of attack and the wings and things like that. Now there are two modes to this flying lawnmower. You have the simple mode, where it's just simply a lawnmower that can cut the lawn as normal. But you also have the flying mode, where you'd be able to make your lawnmower float in the sky and cut bushes and even trees. As demonstrated earlier, you would also be able to cross over any obstacles that are in your way, like crops or streams. In order to come up with the design for the flying lawnmower, we used GrabCAD.com. We selected a lawnmower that we felt was detailed enough, and we also selected a handful of ideas before that. Some of these ideas were a robotic arm, a motorcycle, a gear motor, and a lawnmower, but ultimately we went with the lawnmower in the end. We felt that adding wings and propeller would be really fun to do, and we also figured that this would provide us a creative opportunity to think of our own designs. Our flying lawnmower has 84 parts in total, and 193 total mates. This includes normal mates, advanced mates, and also mechanical mates. We grouped our parts into four main groupings, which will be shown on the next slide. Again, our model is electric, so that means it doesn't require gas. As mentioned before, we split our parts into four main groupings. You have the body, which protects the lawnmower and its parts from the outside environment. It also provides casing to hold all of the components in place and hold them sturdy while the lawnmower is moving. The wings of our lawnmower are not only retractable, but the same function can also be used to control the angle of attack. The air traveling across the cross section of the wing will generate lift in order for this lawnmower to fly. You'll notice that the propeller is also screwed into the front. The wheels of the lawnmower are able to provide it traction and allows the lawnmower to move. It also ensures even movement from all of the sides. In the first explosive view, you can see all of the hex nuts, the bolts, and the rods that are holding all of the parts together. This especially includes holding together the wheels to the body, the wings, and the adjusters. In the second explosive view, you can see the parts that hold together the blade. This includes all the locking mechanisms on there, and some of the parts of the motor which turn the blade. You also see some casings which make sure that the blade does not damage any of the parts of the motor. In addition, you have the handlebar, which steers the lawnmower and helps you gain control. The little blocks that you see here are all the different types of electronics that are used to turn on and off the controls of the lawnmower. All of the buttons which control the electrical functions, including things like adjusting the height at which the grass is cut and adjusting the speed of the blade, would all be put here. 
You can also see the basket which holds the lawnmower bag is open. This is where all of the grass would go. When the blade spins, a vacuum-like effect occurs, and the grass is sucked up and goes to that back compartment. It can then be emptied out in the end. To start the lawnmower, all that needs to happen is the start button on the handlebar has to be pushed. Then you can use the control buttons for specific grass heights, and when the motor starts, the blade will spin. Within the main body of the lawnmower lies an electric motor with an armature, several windings of conductive material, and a permanent magnet. This rotor is attached to the blade at the bottom and a fan at the top. Once you connect the plug, common AC current begins to flow. This is changed to DC current. The magnetic field between the wiring causes rotation due to current flow. This is enhanced by adding a ferromagnetic material in the core to greatly increase the strength of the resultant field due to alignment of domains. This ultimately rotates the shaft through a torque produced by the field, along with the dissipation of heat, which is aided in the long mower through the gaps in the engine's frame and induced current in the opposite direction as per Faraday's law. Regarding modeling tricks, our group utilized various tools within SOLIDWORKS to replicate and build the flying lawnmower. Of the many tools used in our project methods including extruding, cutting, mirroring, and applying patterns were commonly used to successfully draw our desired components. In terms of mechanisms and mates for our project, we had quite the variety. Concentric mates were crucial for the motor section of the mower as well as for the wheels. Concentric and coincident mates would make up the majority of the mates. For things such as the wings, handlebar, and bin cover, limit angle mates were used. In terms of mechanical mates, we used hinge mates for the retractable wings. Screw mates could also be used for each of the bolts in the assembly. In regards to our team progress, initially each component of the mower was split evenly amongst the group members where everyone got six to seven parts each. After recreating the parts on SOLIDWORKS, the assembly, animation, and video responsibilities were split accordingly depending on the computer and software capabilities of each member. The report and presentation responsibilities were documented during the assembly and animation of the project. Overall, we learned a lot and had a lot of fun recreating the object and the additional parts that we added to it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our presentation.